Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin. So what are you thinking about today's project? Well, actually thinking about making a, a little tray out of walnut. Okay. Uh, and we're going to put it together with a box joint. So if you look at this old milk crate right here, you see the corners? Yeah. All those little fingers are considered a box joint. Yeah, it's kind of cool because it doesn't hide anything, right? I mean, it's showing off that entire joint. Right, and you can celebrate that joint. Here's one that I made right here a while ago. It's basically two pieces of plywood put together like that. But think about this. It's a very strong joint because you're almost tripling the length of the board with glue surface. Right. So consequently, an old milk crate like this that's been around for 100 years, still hanging in there. Still hanging in there. And think about it. Those things are thrown around off and on the milk truck yeah. or wherever. So it's a big deal. So this is your material? This is the material right here. We're going to use half inch walnut. We'll make the tray out of that. And how do you want to make the actual joint itself? Because I guess you could do it a couple different ways. If you wanted to, you could hand cut it, but that would be ridiculous because you'd be there for a day making one corner. Let's not do but that. the easiest thing is to make a sled so you have a jig and a dado blade. So you can just zip it through, make cut, 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 run after the other. Right. You need a table saw like this or even a portable one that can take a dado blade or you can also use a router table. So what are you thinking for today? Router table or table saw? I'm thinking table saw with a dado blade. All right, let's make a sled. All right. First thing I want to do is rip down all the pieces that I need to make the sled. Now I need to rip down the rails to guide the sled. All right, so I put in four little scrap pieces of cardboard down to lift my guide rails up out of the dado slot because I don't want it flush. I want it raised up just a little bit. And I'll just take my platform here, place it against the rip vents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten these rails to the underside of the platform by using some fast setting glue. Drop it down, push it into the wet glue. That positions them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive a couple of pin nails into that also to ensure that it doesn't move. So the sled will slide easier. I'm going to use a lubricant for wood and metal. I mark the location and pre-drill the holes for the back of the sled. With the back located in the correct position, I clamp it and then screw it in place. This block right here is to keep my hands away from the blade if it should come all the way through the template but I want to make sure that the wet glue doesn't go anywhere near where the saw blade's going to go. All right, our sled is just about ready. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to measure the thickness of our dado blade. And I'm just going to hold a block on one side, keeping it flat, so the outside part of the teeth on this side. Now I'm going to measure to the opposite side, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So that's the dimension of basically the teeth, or the fingers. Yep. And I want to cut a square peg first as our guideline that will fit into that slot. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, now we can change the blade to the dado blade. All right, our dado blade is in. And now I'm going to raise the height or adjust the height of the blade in relationship to the thickness of the material that we're going to use. In this case, it's half inch. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a slot through our template. Okay, so now that's through. The next thing I need to do is adjust the height, and I'm going to raise the blade up. This is going to be the depth of our slot, basically. Exactly. So you can see that I'm up about a sixteenth of an inch. I'd rather be a little bit too high than too low, because if I'm too high, I can shave off the top of the square pegs. All right, our height is set. So the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce another board that's going to go right here against this. And I'm going to cut a dado in this right now. 
All right, now this dado is for this peg right here, this wooden peg that I cut. I want it to fit in there firmly, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue that in there so it won't move. I'm gonna tip it up so it lays flat. And with my leftover piece from this square peg, I take it, I put it right beside it like that, hold it tight, push it to the blade by sliding this board over. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to put a reference line on the one that's going to be adjustable. So if I understand this correctly, this reference line is basically now you're zeroed out. I'm zeroed out. And this block means that it's going to set the distance between each one of these dado head cuts. Exactly right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check it. I push it there gently against the peg. <laughs> So there it is. So now we're ready to cut the other ones. So now the box is going to go together. Our pins are equal. Next thing I want to think about is how we're going to mount the bottom. So the dado, in this case, could go right here because when the draw goes together, it's gonna hide that dado. I wanna adjust the height of the blade about halfway the thickness of our material, which is about a quarter of an inch. So now we have our two ends dadoed, ready to go together. Next, we wanna cut the ends for our handles. So we'll get glue in the joints on one end, then we'll stand it up, put our pieces in, and uh, clamp it. So what we did is we made a dado here with the single blade by just making a couple of passes, and then we made a rabbit cut on the end of each board. We have a nice tight joint, but it also allows the boards to float in there. Well, you know, the old timers, they didn't glue them. What they would do is they would make the joints and they would take an eight penny or a 10 penny finish nail and they'd drill a pilot hole right down through like a hinge pin and drive one in, depending on the length or the size of the joint. Hmm. So it was actually a pinned box joint. A good glue joint is very, very strong. Okay, I'm tight right, there. That's good. Whew. Look at that, Tommy. Yeah, I it love looks it. Looks pretty good. I like walnut. It's really nice wood. So how long for the glue to dry, you think? Well, we should wait a few hours anyways for the glue to set up, dry, and then we can sand all these corners, Yeah. fine tune the sanding, and then put a finish on it. Love the corners already, right? So you can yeah. see the joint. Like you said, it's celebrated. Looks so, good, but you know it's going to hold. And nice for a finish, what are you thinking? Uh, something food safe. I'm thinking maybe a mineral oil with beeswax in it, something like that. Buff it up. It's going to look awesome. Nice job, Tommy. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.